Hello everyone, it's Ronnie Daniels. I have not made a video in a very long time, and I apologize for that. Uh, in fact, it's been so long, I uh, couldn't, I had to look for the on-off button on this camera because I couldn't remember where it was and I uh, had a few struggles there trying to, to uh, turn it on. Then when I did, the battery uh, was about dead after I got started, so I stuck it in the battery charger for just a second and I'm going to try to make this video just to give you a few uh, tips uh, for spring, since spring is coming. And also uh, tell you about some things I've done around here. So you can listen to the tips and then you can, if you don't want to hear me ramble about what I've done around here, you can just stop the video then. But uh, I wanted to tell you some things uh, that you really should think about uh, since spring will be here. The one thing I've said about beekeeping uh, in, in times past is you're always looking to the next season. You're always, so you gotta make sure you're prepared. Uh, for the, so now it's, it's uh, I'm in Alabama, so it's a mild winter, but there's, you know, there's not, other than pollen source, there's no nectar source, of course. But I'm looking at what do I need to do to get my equipment ready. And in, in my case, you know, I've had some bee boxes that uh, have become misaligned where they had gaps in them and that kind of thing. So I nailed those back together or screwed them back together. Uh, I'm going to paint some of them that have looked to get weathered because once you start expanding some of that, your beekeeping, you know, those, the price of the boxes, the price of the frames, the, the price of the foundation, all that starts adding up. So it's important to take very good care of it and try to take care of your comb, all that. So um, I'm patching some of that together. Another thing that I have learned through experimenting, and you know, you'll learn this from other beekeepers, is that plastic foundation is pretty dang cool. Uh, I, I uh, neglected my bees uh, in 2021 quite a bit, and as, as a result, had a lot of damage from wax moss, and had to throw away a lot of comb. But with, and some of the plastic foundation that I experimented with, it's easy. It, you know, you just scrape it off and you're good to go again. So that's something to think about if you're looking at uh, maybe m taking that next step above the wax sheets or natural comb, uh, start looking at plastic foundation. Of course, that's another investment too you got to look at. So those are some things I want to tell you to think about for spring. Uh, one other thing. Um, grab on the back of your hive and just kind of lift up on it a little bit and see how heavy or light it is that'll give you an indication of what kind of reserves the bees have in there to make it through the rest of the winter and if you need to feed them and there's lots of videos on the internet about different ways you can feed them to help them get through the winter because uh, they'll they'll start burning through some fuel if they get out and start flying a little bit and there's no nectar sources there they'll just go through that honey pretty quick so that's the things I want to tell you to think about for the spring. I'm sure there's some other things we'll talk about another time. And now I just want to give you guys an update on what happened in 2021. Uh, I neglected my bees. Oh yeah, by the way, this is where any of you want to move on. You don't want to hear me ramble about what I've done last year. You can stop the video and go on to something else. But in 2021, I kind of neglected the bees quite a bit. I didn't treat for mites like I should have. I did treat for mites but not my normal regimen, which was usually three times in the spring and three times in the, in the fall. And as a result, I paid the price and other factors too. You know, I, I've told you in the past that I've had instances where a queen did not get mated. So um, I have always let my bees swarm because it's a good way to reduce mite population because mites can't reproduce if there's not a cell uh, uh, with a egg larva. In, uh, in the making to be able to lay their eggs. So I always looked at it as a good thing. And really, I've said this before, swarms are a sign of progress. So if they swarm, it's not the end of the world. There's some benefits to that. Uh, the down, one of the big downsides is making sure you get a mated queen. So I've, I've had to deal with that. And uh, a lot of times this past year and the year before did not get a mated queen. Well, it doesn't take long if you if the, you don't get a mated queen, if you don't start checking, that things can go downhill really quick. Because especially if you started piling a lot of boxes on there, keep staying ahead of them so they could build more. Well, that's just more territory for them to have to defend against wax moths, high beetles, ants, uh, yellow jackets, whatever it wants to get in there. So in a matter of a week or so, 
if their pop their population will start dropping if they don't get a new queen in there within a a, a, a decent amount of time and you can tell that their population is dropping because you'll start seeing less activity at the entrance <clears throat> and then what will happen is insects will just start taking over they'll start getting robbed by other bees uh, hive beetles wax moths take over well that happened to me on a few hives that had a lot of boxes stacked on them so uh, it, it they wax moths devastated probably about 20 10 frame boxes uh, just destroyed the wax in them and uh, so I took the chance uh, the opportunity over this winter to go ahead and clean that up fix the frames and swap over to some uh, wax I mean some uh, plastic foundation so I'll show you a little bit around here what I've been doing let me flip you around <clears throat> these are all boxes that I have gone through and changed over to uh, plastic foundation I've done that during the why it's been cold and there's not really a whole lot to, to be able to do outside with the bees and then I've kind of patched on a little bit some that sometimes the grooves like right here you'll get gaps uh, where they'll come loose and I've fix some of those and then I'll, I'll paint some of these some of these probably need another coat of paint and you know these add up in price when you look at the boxes the cost and then the frames and then the foundation and so I've done that and then um, I may have mentioned in a previous video that uh, I had a roll-up door put on the shop well prior to that roll-up door there was a an angle iron built door here that slid on on those rails right there so that big door that's probably about 10 foot by 11 was a pain to move so it was just aggravating trying to uh, open that door it's, it made it where you didn't really want to use it so the roller door was nice well what I did with that that door the angle iron door there is drug it over here about a year ago and it may have been in a previous video sitting on the ground well I finally took a tractor and slowly lifted it up because I'm not good at construction uh, matter of fact, I'm horrible at woodworking and pot, just put concrete blocks up on each side raise a little bit until I had it pr pretty high and actually it was pretty unstable and then I just dug the 4x4 four four post directly under each corner and did that so now I've got a place to keep some of my beekeeping equipment outside uh, under shelter and you know whenever you do uh, honey extraction when it's time to do that you know you can leave these boxes out here and let them pick them clean which is good the less remnants of pollen or honey anything you have in wax cone the better off you'll be from wax moths and hive beetles getting in there because any any of that that's left over will attract them and they'll get in there and damage it some of the comb that i had that was not destroyed by wax moths happened to be some that was extracted and bees had picked through where there was no uh, remnants of anything left in it so uh, I'm down to four hives and I had about kept about ten in the past somewhere around in there there's uh, three that are still going here and I've got one nuke over there so I only got four so this year because I'm so low on colonies and I have so much equipment that's set up for more colonies I'm going to be splitting as early as I can so told you about letting them swarm in the past this year I'm going to attempt to prevent swarming uh, because last year uh, the, all the swarms really hurt me on uh, honey production so uh, because what happens is when they when they swarm their population can't get built up enough to catch that major flow so you wind up with you know hives that could have done a lot better you know so that's that's uh, this year being being that I'm so low on colonies, I'm going to have to uh, try to prevent swarming and increase my colony population. And that's really about it for now. Uh, I'll I'll try to make videos a little more often and I get my batteries charged up on here. But um, appreciate all of you who follow along. And if you have any questions or anything you want to see in a video, just let me know. Uh, one thing, other thing I did want to say is. I think this is my sixth year of beekeeping and it's weird how things change each year uh, where one thing may have been a problem one year and then the next year it's not it's something else and I'll give you an example first year or two 
I had a big problem with hive beetles. Now, if you got a strong colony of bees, they can stop the hive beetles from doing damage. So, uh, people always say, I lost my bees to hive beetles or I lost them to wax moths. That's not necessarily, not really the case. You lost them because you had a weak colony or you had, they, they had too much room to try to defend. So, uh, that's wax moths and, and beetle damage or losing your bees to that is secondary. It's usually another problem that's underlying as the reason why they took over. So, uh, but anyway, uh, high beetles were bad for a couple of years in a row. And then last year, for the first time ever, it was wax moths. And I mean, those wax moths can do so much damage. And, and I'll see if I can show you, maybe not necessarily the damage, but I'll tell you, they lay their larvae in some well protected cocoons and which is hard for it winds up destroying the comb but uh, I don't have an empty frame here but uh, on, on a frame like this this is a, a I think it's called a wedge top so you, you know you put your foundation you take this strip off right here put your foundation there and then you take that strip and you nail it down so there's a tiny little gap between this this strip and the back side of this wood I mean so I mean I, I imagine maybe an eighth of an inch or, or even less once you put it back put put it back together with fresh foundation in it those wax moths had gotten in there and laid eggs and had uh, cocoons developing into wax moths I mean all in the wood not only that they can they actually will burrow in the wood and damage the wood so I mean I'm just amazed at how much devastation that a wax moth can do and hive beetles can do a lot of damage too but particularly wax moths they're they're uh, pretty dang destructive so um, something to keep in mind that, that one year to the next you, you may encounter different problems you know uh, queens not getting mated or or not, you know, not coming back from mating flight, or all kind of little things like that. Uh, so every year is going to be a little, a little different, just like the weather's different. And and uh, we're, we're beekeepers trying to get bees to do one thing, and then they have in their mind they want to do something different. So that's just the way it goes. But anyway, thank you all for watching. I promise you, I'll make a, another video soon. See y'all.